do you know your gigahertz from your Wi-Fi? Does your CPU need CPR? You may think buying a computer is confusing, but once you get a better understanding of the technology and what you need, it gets easier. A computer is made up of many different parts, and each part has a specific job. The central processing unit, or CPU, is the brains of the computer. It is where all the work is done. Current computers have a CPU with multiple cores. That just means it has multiple CPUs working together as one. The computer has two places to hold all the information it needs to work, RAM and the hard drive. RAM, short for Random Access Memory, is the short-term working memory for the computer. It is fast, but only stores information while the computer is on. The CPU is bouncing information back and forth between the RAM. RAM is really what makes programs run. The more RAM you have, the faster those programs are going to run. If RAM can be thought of as the short-term memory, the hard drive can be considered the long-term memory. The hard drive is a permanent storage space for the computer. Uh, we can store stuff like documents, movies, music. It's basically a central storage for your whole computer. Large internal hard drives are common, and most computers allow you to expand the hard drive easily with an external option. You want to get online with your computer, and that requires either a Wi-Fi adapter or Ethernet port. Wi-Fi allows you to connect to an internet gateway without wires. Ethernet requires wires for the connection. The monitor is how you see what the computer is doing, and the keyboard and mouse, or touchpad, are how you send commands to the computer. The part of the computer that gets all these components to talk together is the OS, or operating system. There are multiple operating systems available, but the two most popular are Windows and Macintosh. At this point, both systems are very similar, and the major differences can be boiled down to purpose. Macintosh is geared more towards all the apps and the programs that come with the operating system. If you notice when you go in a store, the Mac computers are a little bit more expensive than the PCs with the same specs. They have a lot of extra programs for photo editing, video editing, and PCs are geared more towards office use, gaming, um, and things like that. All these components are all wrapped up into three general models. The desktop, the laptop, and the tablet. The desktop is the traditional home computer, but is quickly being replaced by more mobile devices. Desktops are good because they are usually lower cost and have more options. The downside is once set up, they can't really go anywhere. A desktop isn't something you're going to move around, so it's usually you know you want to work out of one location, one place. The other consideration you have is the screen size. A desktop, you can have usually a much larger screen, so again, if it goes, you have low vision or you're starting to have low vision, you may have to consider that. A laptop is a portable computer. All the components are combined in a much smaller package. The laptop you'll be able to take anywhere you go, to work, to school. Um, it's really mobile. There's a battery life, so you don't have to have it plugged in all the time. The laptop can travel with you, but you should carefully consider how much travel you plan to do when looking for laptops. 17-inch laptops, they're going to be a little heavier. They're going to give more screen space. They can have higher resolutions. 13 inches are more for if you're going to be taking on the go a lot and you want something light and small and easy to use. The newest type of computer is the tablet. But the tablet is more portable than a laptop, usually lighter, has longer battery life, um, but it operates a little differently than a normal computer PC slash laptop. Tablets are very powerful mobile computers, but their abilities are more limited than a laptop. A tablet's more for just email use, browsing the internet, maybe looking at ebooks, watching videos. Um, where a laptop's going to offer things more like word processing, you know, typing up documents using Excel spreadsheets and things like that. To figure out what computer is a good fit for you, you need to plan on what you want to do and where you want to do it. There's really a lot to offer, offer seniors in this world than, than there have been in the past using things like email, using things like Skype, being on Facebook in fact. But then you also see seniors who are creating websites, doing graphic design, um, having new hobbies like digital photography. What programs will you use? Will you be doing a lot of typing or are you more a casual surfer? 
Do you plan to work exclusively from home, or would you like to take it with you around town? It's fine typing short messages, short emails, things like that, but you're not going to want to type a long novel on a tablet without having an external keyboard. You also need to do a realistic assessment of your budget. You should be able to buy a good all-around desktop or laptop for $400 to $700, but if you have specific needs, the costs can increase quickly. You should compare systems that have a minimum 2 GHz multi-core processor and at least 4 gigs of RAM. A 500 gig hard drive is a minimum size to store your pictures, videos, and documents. If you are looking for a laptop, be sure to try it out in a store, as laptops have many different types of touchpads and keyboards. Thankfully, there are certain accommodations that, that can be provided. Um, you have different types of mouses with the roll ball. There's a lot more touchscreen computers, and there is voice activation types of things, voice recognition types of things. Once you have an idea of what your budget is and what you need, be sure to shop around. Compare online and in-store sales, and also look at the manufacturer's websites for refurbished computers that come with a warranty. There are also local organizations which offer refurbished computers for much less. Visit sfconnected.org for more information. Purchasing a computer should not be scary. Once you get an idea of what you need, you can select a system that will get you cruising.